Hello everyone, I'm Crystal Horton. Thank you for joining us today. It is an honor that I get to do this interview with Tino Peabody and his team, Lauren and Becky are joining us as well. Um, quick introduction, Tino Peabody is the founder of Peabody Residential and has been a real estate broker for more than seven years. He's been involved in residential real estate for over 12 years and is a Northern Virginia native. Real estate investing and management has been the main focus throughout his real estate career. How are you, Tino? Very well, thank you. <laughs> We're excited. And Lauren and Becky, how are you as well? <laughs> this is Becky and this is Lauren. Hello. <laughs> um, I, also have, <clears throat> I, I also have the Chief Executive Officer, Ryan Steinolfson, with us today. Hi. Hey, guys. So, you know, we just want to chat. So, Tino, I have, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, why would you hire a property management company rather than, let's say, a real estate brokerage? That's a great question. Um, first, in the state of Virginia, you actually have, have to be a real estate broker in order to provide property management services. You have to work under a real estate brokerage under a broker. The difference is that most companies are centric to sales and purchases rather than property management, which is leasing, property management, maintenance, inspections, and all the more comprehensive things that come along with it. It's also a much longer term process working with a property management client than it is, let's say, for a buyer and seller. And specifically, you see the team here in a normal real estate brokerage the director of client services, which is Becky's sole position as a full-time position where she works with all of our clients and Lauren's uh, director of leasing position doesn't exist in a normal real estate brokerage. So you don't have the specialty skills. You don't have the specialty uh, specific jobs where there is somebody doing that job all the time. And what you get is you get kind of an agent who is the jack of all trades. They're doing purchases and sales and they're trying to also manage a property with you know, a little bit of knowledge, but not as much as say we have. So our company is solely and fundamentally a real estate property management company for residential properties. Now we do sell homes, but they're only specifically for our contract clients. This allows us to focus on procuring tenants, leasing properties, making sure the condition of them stays excellent throughout the entire process, that the leases that we use are current and compliant, Actually, for instance, I was just, um, I'm on the Virginia Association of Realtors Property Management Committee. I'm the chairman this year. And one of the things that we're doing is we are developing the policy and procedure manual specifically for property management companies, which is completely different than a normal real estate brokerage, right? So all these specialties and all the specialities, exactly what is the difference between a normal real estate brokerage and a fundamental and specifically geared property management brokerage. Now, with that said, another thing that's also important to know is that when you are a property management company, there are lots of specialties and special designations that you can get that you're not gonna be able to get with, let's say, a normal realtor. For a normal realtor and real estate brokerage, they may specialize in buyers and sellers, but they're not going to have residential property management professional, master property manager, both of which designations I have. Be part of the National Association of Residential Property Managers, which I happen to be the state president of this year. So all of these different things that we that I do as a volunteer, as well as my staff participates in all the continuing education, these are the real things that make a difference in the level of service provided, the competency of the staff that's servicing your property, and mitigating risk. Property management is the highest liability thing that you can do in residential real estate. So the people who know the most are probably the best people to work with. And that is, that's you know, kind of fundamentally the real difference. What do you think about that answer? <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, woo. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, for most people, what we try to do as a company is when they initially contact us, part of our process is to try to educate people as much as possible. We do really the opposite of what I consider to be a sales technique, where if you're going to hire a realtor, they come in and they pitch you on how they do all these wonderful things and they're going to do the best job for you. We tend to educate people and through that process, they realize the difference between us and let's say other property management companies in the area, as well as the difference between what would be a normal realtor or real estate brokerage helping them and our you know, fundamental and specific property management company. 
Yeah, that, that definitely makes complete sense. I mean, if, if you're going specifically towards property management, you don't necessarily want somebody who's not in that department or who doesn't have those credentials or um, goes to those courses and, and can provide what an individual is looking for specifically for property management. Exactly. A couple other things I was going to note. So Lauren, right? Our lease is specifically geared and proprietary to us. So although we do use a general realtor lease in order to make it so it's not very different for other agents who work with us and provide tenants to us to work with, we have a proprietary addendum that is updated every single year that is above and beyond what the normal generic leases would be that a brokerage would use. And we have a tenant handbook as well as policy and procedure manual, as well as several other things that are specific to our company that we use that are geared for property management leases for clients, all of which basically reduce risk and mitigate possible lawsuits, unhappy tenants, a lot of different things. Also, not only the leases, but also our intake. So you have to think about it. When you hire a property management company like ours, we gather so much information about your property that most of our clients are overseas on the other side of the world. And they really like working with us because our systems, our software, everything is designed to be transparent and informative. It's like an educational process through the entire time that they work with us. We also provide everything online from digital pictures and marketing and every document they have to communication that's secure, where you're not gonna get this kind of very specialized, let's call them tools, that we can utilize and that we do utilize for our clients. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it's, it's so, so like what you're saying is it's not just you get the certificate and that's where you end in the education department. It's a continuous flow of learning what's happening within the property management business um, monthly, you know, continuously. Um, year round. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and for instance, so, we go to the annual National Association of Residential Property Managers um, conferences. But because I'm the state president, I interact with all of the leaders in property management across the country. So a lot of the things, the, the, the technology that we use, the, um, the technology we use, the, the leases, our best business practices, they stem from a combination and kind of a culture that we have within the community of property management that I get to use it from all these different states. And so you're getting kind of the best of everything available in the whole U.S. and all of these boutique companies. I work with all these people on a regular basis. And, and part of my job at the company is to improve client service, mitigate risk, and then help put out what are big fires, which don't tend to happen as often as you think. Um, but when they do happen, they're fairly serious. And so you need to have the right systems in place. And it tends to be pretty easy with us. Yeah, so, it's good to have that team there. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Now, um, before we finish with this video today, is there any last minute or last minute, any last comments you'd like? Anything? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we need everything we send you. So we don't, yes. we don't want to send, yeah. we send initially, especially with me when I do new client intake and new client services. So we send you, we send clients a lot of information at first, but all of it is relevant and all of it needs to be thoroughly read. The more you read up front, the less you'll have to do later on. Actually, that's a super good point. Again, it's part of the education process. If, if you know, unlike some other industries, the more educated our client is, the better their experience is, and the easier our job is, because yeah. a lot of it is just bad news that we tell people. Um, but yes, the one last thing I wanted to say is one of the things that we've implemented um, by working with you guys, actually, was a happiness guarantee. And this is something that I don't know of any other property management company in our area that does. Some of the best ones in the country do it because they're systematized so much that they can put this out there. But we have a guarantee that any month or all of the months that you're with us indefinitely, if you're not happy with our services, you don't pay for them that one month. So that means at any time, if we do a mediocre to a lousy job or forget something or the client's unhappy, they can just contact us and we don't get paid that month and we don't charge them for our services. And I think that really, for me, I was able to do that because of the staff, not necessarily because our company is so great. We have great policies and procedures and practices and everything else, but because the people that we have working here know what they're doing, they're extremely dedicated, and they really do an excellent job that we can make this commitment to each and every client. And I think that really says a lot about 
the team here and how we feel and what we feel we can provide to people as a service. Yeah. What, hey, really quick, uh, Tino, um, Ryan here and, um, you know, Crystal introduced me earlier. One of the things, you know, I'd like to, I think people would like to know because there's potentially a lot of property owners that might be watching this video. Um, what are some of the common mistakes that you see property owners making in terms of like managing their own property? Self-management, right. So you tend to have a very different relationship with the tenant and self-management. And yes. what ends up happening, honestly, is that the majority of landlords get taken advantage of. Yes. And it's not because the tenants are bad, it's because the tenants interact directly with the landlord and landlords have, are very nice people. They have a heart just like everyone else and they feel bad. And yes. I've seen situations where thousands and thousands of dollars have been spent and honestly, no good reason, but because the owner is, is difficult, they just don't like to say no. And yeah. they feel like if they interact or they have, if they have objections to what a tenant asks for, because they are the people that own the property, the tenant is going to retaliate against them. I mean, and that is honestly one of the biggest ones. It's a fear of that, and the relationship just takes a completely different turn. Additionally, they hire contractors who may not be licensed, who have issues, and when a tenant sues them, they get in a lot of trouble because yep. they're, they're uh, responsible for workman's compensation. Honestly, the leases they use are not up to date. The terms that they put in them, a lot of them can be illegal. And so you have almost an unenforceable lease. And if you go to court and you pursue a tenant, the judge will actually favor the tenant versus the, the landlord because they have so many what we call restrictions or custom terms that they don't understand are really not, they're not going to pass the court yep. system, right? Yep. Also, they don't know how to handle a tenant who's not paying rent and expedite the process of getting them back on board. And this is where you can really have a huge expense where a tenant is not paying, they're communicating with you, you don't understand how to send the right notices, what you're doing, and this process, it goes six months with no income and then you have to evict them rather than one late payment time, a system in place to get them back on board, turn them into good tenants, keep them, make money, everybody's happy. So what you're saying is, is, is that, you know, basically the, um, the, the cost that somebody would, um, well, the, the cost of hiring you guys is, is less than what the downside is of them actually having all these expenses because of lost rent, potential court fees, you know, um, opportunity cost, like, you know, the, 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 the cost of the property not being rented or you know, just downtime and just, you know, headspace. I mean, not able, I've owned properties myself where literally I was not able to enjoy myself in my personal life because I was so worried night, you know, nights where I wasn't able to sleep because yeah. my property was, you know, like in disarray. These are, it's, it's just like, it's like um, a part of me, you know, like, it's like, I've got this, this place that I'm renting out and I've got somebody in there and I don't know what's going to happen with it because I'm not getting rent. I've got, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get rent. I might be, able, I might not be able to collect on a security deposit and, um, and the person's still in there. What do I do? What's my next step? You know, some people might be more advanced in that. And I get that as property owners. Um, but man, I mean, I had up to eight properties at one time and, and I, I'm really glad that I, that I, um, you know, that I took advantage that I hired a property management company to help me manage because ultimately their fees were less than what I ended up paying myself in terms of lost rent, court costs, all the other things that you had mentioned before. And honestly, so when you hire a property management company, normally, you know, uh, the thing at the bottom says refer to an accountant because I'm not one, but all of our fees are tax deductible. All the expenses are tax deductible. Now you start being able to depreciate your property. So the cost of having um, a property manager can really end up making you more money in the end. And if you, like in our area, Northern Virginia, the DC market where we work in, our specialty is government, people whose primary residence is what we are managing because they're on assignment, they're going to post, they're going to do a tour of duty, yeah. whatever they're doing for several years, and they plan to come back to their home. Yeah. So we manage very valuable properties. Yes. That need to be taken care of that need to systematically be inspected so that when they come back after two years, five years, six years, the property is in the best condition it can be. 
they it's been maintained there haven't been problems and when there are big insurance issues things like that fires floods hot water heaters i mean you name it we deal with it it gets taken care of well and they come back to a property that's taken care of Honestly, well that and and, and, and you, it's huge and and like you know hot water he heaters that break unexpectedly toilets that get talk that get clogged up unexpectedly you know disposals that you know, in the middle of the night, those phone calls. I remember, you know, I talked about my personal life before being interrupted. I mean, I can't tell you how many times that I got interrupted in, at, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night because of a plumber emergency, you know? And so to be able to... <laughs> oh, my daughter. I know, I saw her. Yeah, we picked, we picked her up from school earlier today because we were shooting a video. So she, she wants to be on Facebook too. That's awesome. Have you ever, have you ever seen the... There's the one... Um, Facebook, it's like a, a, a video that went viral because this guy was being interviewed by NBC and his uh, kid comes in the comes in the door. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. He's literally like going like that. Like, <laughs> on with like Tom broke off. The, 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 the nanny runs through the hall, like almost like busts down the door, like grabs the kid out of the room. Like all. Oh, wow. <laughs> it awesome. is hilarious. I'll send it right. to you. You've got to see it. It was, it was kind of embarrassing for the guy because i mean you should see the, the ladies like like holding the door on her knee <laughs> to not be in the in the picture right so yeah we're not we're not that concerned we're not you know on uh nbc or cbs or anything like that so good yeah. good thing but, but yeah really great points um thank you for you know is there any are there any final words that you have before we we sign off today no i would just say you know if you're going to interview a company please consider us and um I do, and I say this really, if you have questions and you're listening, you're, you're watching this and you're in a situation where you would like some advice, I'm always here to try to give free advice as much as I can. Yeah. And that's part of, part of what our, our, our mantra and kind of our mission statement here is, is to educate not only our clients, but anybody else who has an issue with a tenant. Great point. And you know what I would just encourage everybody is, you know, below this video, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, just put a comment. And what's our, um, our, our freebie that we got, Crystal, the, the giveaway that uh, the, the lead the, that we have? Avoiding costly mistakes. The Peabody Residential Team put this together as a gift to you for watching our video. woo okay. <laughs> There you go. So, so what we'll do is if you put a comment below, just type in the word uh, mistakes, okay? And then we will know that you want the mistakes PDF, and, we, and our team will send that to you uh, via – messenger or email or however you want or even just comment it to you and that way we can you know we can answer any questions that you have and i'm sure that you know tino will respond to you um via messenger if you are a property owner um because that is one of the one of the nice things is is, is being able to respond quickly and easily and, and you know with the people that that are you know managing your property and, and that's one thing i think that, that tino's done really well and they've got a you've got a really good reputation i mean you got a you know you've got a, a nice star rating on google and um, I would also encourage people to look at, you know, the reputation of the, of the company that you're looking to move with, you know, move forward with as well. So with that, um, yeah, I mean, I think we'll, anything else, Crystal? No, that's, that's fantastic. I just want to say thank you to Tino, Lauren, and Becky for being here today. You're welcome. Thanks again, guys. You bet.